So as we saw in the intro lecture where we looked at running timesheet as an example of a count process, oftentimes when we count events, we would like to record additional features associated with those events. These features are often categorical in nature, and uh, we may want to label events as being of a particular type or class, like for example, what running club or age category a runner was when we record finish times uh, in a running timesheet. Well, now that we have a simple and versatile counting model in the Poisson process, uh, we might want to include such a labeling mechanism in our model and then analyze the count processes which result from isolating events with particular labels that we've assigned. This is the premise behind counting categorical event types, and as we'll see in today's lecture, the Poisson process produces some neat results for analyzing such processes. So let's jump in. So consider a Poisson process, NT, with rate parameter lambda. Now I'll suppose that each time an event is observed, it is labeled or categorized according to some categorical feature. We will refer to each event as being of type A, B, C, etc. Now if we isolate a process consisting of one of these type of events, how can we analyze that process statistically? For that, we have a nice theorem. The theorem goes as follows. So let NTA and NTB denote count processes resulting from assigning events from a Poisson process uh, NT with rate parameter lambda over some window 0 to T to one of two categories. Okay, so a dichotomous assignment mechanism. And it'll assign it to events of type A with probability P and events of type B with probability 1 minus P. Okay, so we include a little statistical mechanism which replicates the assigning of categories. Well, then we'll have that NTA and NTB are independent Poisson processes with rate parameters lambda times P times T and lambda times 1 minus P times T respectively. Okay, cool. So we end up with two independent Poisson processes with some adjusted rate parameters. Now, as it happens, the proof of this statement um, involves only some minor mathematical manipulation, as you will see. It's not too complicated. So the proof starts out with the joint probability of the state variable NTA and NTB. Okay, now if you remember what our theorem is claiming, the theorem is claiming that NTA and NTB will indep be independent Poisson processes uh, with particular rate parameter specifications. Okay, so why we start out with the joint probability is, um, well, if those events are independent, then we must end up with the products of two marginals, and those must be Poisson probabilities with the particular rate parameter specifications. Okay, so recall from your probability calculus um, that two random variables x and y are independent if and only if uh, their joint probability is the product of their marginals. Okay, so that's why we start here, and we want to end up with the product of two Poisson probabilities. Okay. So, first thing we do with this joint probability, uh, we don't have an expression for it yet. We have something that we expect it to be, um, but we need to actually get there. We need to show that it's that expression. Okay, so what we do is we're going to condition on the total of these two um, processes being a particular value. Now, if we recall that uh, NTA and NTB are constructed by assigning events from the process NT, their values at any particular point in time must equate to the state of NT, right? So hence, uh, if we condition on their total, that is the same as saying, well, uh, conditional on being NT being N plus N, right? So if we write the conditional probability, we write probability of NTA equals N and NTB equals M, conditional on NT being M plus N. And then from these standard conditional rules, we have to account for the probability that nt is n plus n. Okay, so first bit of uh, conditioning and probability calculus, not too complicated. Well, this is convenient because, well, if we look at that total that we've just unconditioned on, and we look at the assignment mechanism, that essentially mimics binomial trials, right? Because we think of the total being n plus n, and then observing n events of type A and m events of type B, that is the same having, as having n successes and m failures in binomial trials with success probability P. Okay, so we write down the probability for that as m plus n choose n times P to the power n times 1 minus P to the power n plus m minus n. 
Okay, and we can see already uh, there's one bit of simplification we can do. We can get rid of those ends and that power, simplify the problem. And then we still tag on the probability that nt must be n plus m. Now in our next step, because we know what process nt is, right? It's a Poisson process with rate parameter lambda. We can actually write down that probability, right? And we'll write it down as lambda t to the power n plus m uh, divided by n plus m factorial times e to the minus lambda t. Cool. So that gives us some expressions to work with. And from here on out, it's all just mathematical manipulation. Nothing too complicated. Okay, so first thing we do is we're going to take that lambda t to the power n plus m and we're going to write it as the product of two powers. So lambda t times n, or lambda t to the power n times lambda t to the power m. Straightforward. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take that e to the minus lambda t and we're going to write it in a way which is convenient for our mathematical manipulation. And we'll do that by noting that minus lambda times t is the same as minus lambda times 1 times t, right? And, well, because the probabilities of the random assignment mechanism must sum to 1, we can write that 1 as p plus 1 minus p, right? So we plug it in there, and we write it as e to the minus lambda times p plus 1 minus p times t. Okay, and that allows us to break up that exponential into terms which are convenient for reordering things in the way which we want. So we write it as e to the minus lambda p t times e to the minus lambda 1 minus p times t. Okay. Now what we can do is we can see that we'll have lots of terms with n's and lots of terms with m's. And we can arrange them in a way uh, which sort of mimics the pattern we're looking for, right? And indeed if we do that, we see that we end up with the product of two Poisson probabilities. One with rate parameter lambda p t and the other with rate parameter lambda 1 minus p t. Okay. And that establishes the proof. That is exactly what it claimed. And we also get the impedance because we have the product of two marginals. Okay, so we get the appropriate expressions, we get the independence, that establishes the proof. Right, so the theorem establishes that if we record dichotomous categorical features of a Poisson process, okay, so events of two categories, type or two types, uh, and the random assignment mechanism is justified for whatever application we have in mind, the count process that results from isolating the events associated with a particular category is also a Poisson process, and all of the distributional results that pertain to Poisson processes pertains to this sub-process, albeit with an adjusted rate parameter. So, the counts are Poisson, the inter-arrivals are exponential, and the arrivals are gamma but with the appropriately adjusted rate parameters. Moreover, the process operates independently from any other sub-process resulting from the random selection mechanism. Okay, so that's a nice, neat result, which allows us to answer questions about sub-processes based on categorical features of a counting process. And indeed, it can easily be generalized uh, for more than two categories. Indeed, I'll leave it as one of the exercises to tackle the case where the label can take one of three values. And the proof will there will follow a similar strategy to what we've had here. Cool, so let's have a look at some example problems. Suppose we observe runners arriving at the finishing line of the Two Oceans Marathon at a rate of 0.4 per minute. Furthermore, note that 45% of entrants are from VOB Running Club, with the remaining entrants being from Harfield Harriers Running Club. And we are tasked with the following questions. One, what is the probability of observing more than one runner from VOB crossing the finish line over a period of 15 minutes? Okay, so that's similar to a question I had before, but it's now with respect to a particular category of runner, one from VOB. Question two, given that three VOB runners arrive over a period of 15 minutes, how many half field runners are expected to arrive over the same window of time? So again, simple categorical question. Question three, what is the probability that the first VOB runner crosses the finish line before the, half, before the first half field runner? Okay, so that's a sort of racing question about the time at which these categorical events occur. And then you may assume that the clubs have identical or similar pacing distributions. So that means that the runners from all the clubs are similarly fast 
um, so that a random selection mechanism based on the proportion of entrants is justified. Okay, so the proportions of entrants we give in um, the outline at the start gives us the selection probability for each club. So 0.45 for runners from VOB and 0.55 for runners from Harfield Harriers. Okay, so let's tackle the questions. Question one, what is the probability of observing more than one runner from VOB crossing the finishing line over a period of 15 minutes? Okay, well, VOB runners arrive according to a Poisson process with rate 0.4 times 0.45, right? So remember, NT yeah, has a rate of 0.4, um, so NTA, where, well, the category A is VOB, um, is then, well, what is 0.4? What is the selection probability multiplied by that rate? So it's 0.4 times 0.45. Okay. Right? So we assign that rate. Then we calculate the probability of observing more than one runner. Poisson probability, 1 minus P0.15 minus P115. We plug in the values there, and we get out that that probability is around 0.75. Okay, so simple enough. First thing we had to do is just figure out what is the appropriate rate parameter. And then we could use the standard results from the Poisson processes, right? Question two. Given that three VOB runners arrive over a period of 15 minutes, how many Harfield runners are expected to arrive in the same window of time? Okay, now the confusing part about this question is that you have one overall process, it is selecting runners from that overall process. I've told you now that three have been selected um, from VOB, so how many do you expect to see from Harfield, right? Well, from our theorem, we know that those processes are independent, right? So the number of VOB runners is of no consequence, and thus we expect to see 0.4 times 0.55 times 15. So the adjusted rate is 0.4 times 0.55. Lambda times the selection probability, which is 1 minus p in this case, because we're talking about half field runners, times the exposure, which is the window. And we'll see that, okay, when we do the calculation, that gives us approximately three runners. Cool. So that's how many runners we expect to see from half field. Right. Question three. What is the probability that the first VOB runner crosses the line before the first half field runner? Right, so this is a question about time. Okay, now we, have, we know from our theorem that we have two independent Poisson processes, right? So what are we asking about here? We're asking about the first runners, so we're asking about the first arrivals from each of these processes. Okay, now because the processes are independent, we'll have that, well, what we're trying to calculate here is the probability that S1A, so the arrival, first arrival from type A, so VOB runners, is less than uh, the first arrival from uh, type B, which in this case will be half field runners. Okay, and because, well, those first arrivals coincide with the first inter arrivals, that is the same as asking, well, what is the probability of T1A being less than T1B? Okay, so what is the probability that one exponential is less than another when they are independent? Okay. And furthermore, we also know what the rate parameters for those are, right? The arrivals are independent exponentials with rate parameters 0.18 and 0.22, which you can just calculate from the 0.4 times 0.45 and 0.4 times 0.55, respectively. All right. Cool. So we know the rates. We know what variables we're dealing with, uh, but we still need to calculate the probability. So what is the probability that one in this exponential is less than another when they are independent with the given rates? For that, we'll need an interim result. And the interim result is as follows. Let x and y be independent exponentials or with distributed, distributed with parameters lambda and mu, respectively. Then, the probability that x is less than y is just lambda divided by lambda plus mu. Okay, nice simple result. And the proof is just as simple as well. Okay, and again, just uses a conditioning argument. The way you prove this is you say, well, what is the probability that x is less than y? Well, write that as an integral um, over of running from 0 to infinity over the probability of x being less than y. Given that y is fixed at some particular value, uh, lowercase y, multiplied by the density of y, um, and then you integrate over that range uh, because you're accounting for y taking on all its possible values. Simple as that. 
Okay, so you plug in the expressions, you have that density because it is exponential. Um, you see, okay, you end up with a nice, neat, simple integral. Evaluate that expression and you'll see that, okay, the probability of x being less than y is just lambda divided by lambda plus mu. Cool. So what we're now we're going to do is we're going to use this interim result in our calculation. If we go back to our calculation, we see that the probability that the first arrival from type, process of type A being less than uh, the first arrival from process of type B, okay, so V of B versus R field, um, just plug in the appropriate rates, and then we'll see that, well, that evaluates to 0.45 times 0.4 divided by 0.4. Why just by 0.4? Well, those probabilities have to sum to 1 again, okay, and we see that the 0.4s cancel, and we end up with the probability of 0.45. Well, hang on, that looks familiar, and indeed it should be an intuitive result. We should have actually been able to guess this result from the start, right? Because the random selection mechanism applies to the first runners as well. And indeed, it is actually possible to answer more general questions about uh, which order in which arrivals occur for competing Poisson processes. And an excellent metaphor you'll find in the literature um, is that people like to call these problems Poisson races, um, though I'm not sure who coined the term. Uh, but anyways, uh, we'll tackle the generalizations of these results in a different video. And that, include, that concludes our uh, example problems. Cool. I hope you found that interesting. Uh, I'll leave some problems on screen for you to check out, and then I'll see you in the next one.